On this episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy, I'm going to teach you how to replace the brakes on your Kia Soul that are completely shot and worn out. Once you've got everything on your list, go ahead and find your wheel locks because there's no way you're going to get those things off without the keys. Oh yeah. We're going to start with the front wheel first. Uh, both front wheels are going to be exactly the same, just mirrored of each other. So once you do one side, the other side will be a piece of cake. A common problem that most people run into is that they jack the car up first and then try and loosen the lug nuts. You don't want to do that. You want to break the lug nuts loose first while it's on the ground. There's going to be one locked lug nut on each wheel. Go ahead and find it first. Slide it around until it slides into place. You don't want to use any impact tools on this because you may strip it out. So get your breaker bar and your right socket and go ahead and snap it loose. That's one of them done. Now we need to get the other ones off. Next we're going to break the other four loose. And that's why you keep it on the ground. Once you've got them all loose, it's time to jack up the car. It doesn't need to be killer high, just off the ground. We're also going to find a jack stand so we can be super safe. There, now if anything terrible were to happen, at least we have a bit of a safety catch. Next, fully take off the lug nuts. The last one's always going to be a bit stuck because it's got the entire weight of the wheel trying to come off on it. So, just give a little force and it'll come undone. Go ahead and remove your tire and rim. Set it off to the side where it won't run anybody's feet over. Next you'll need to break loose the two bolts that are holding on the caliper. They are both 14 millimeter, one at the top, one at the bottom. Go ahead and back them out, but don't take it off yet. You can remove both of the screws and set them aside somewhere where you won't lose them. Next you'll want to find something like an old coat hanger you can cut up to use but you're going to want to hang the caliper on something like the top of the spring. This way you're not putting a lot of load on the rubber brake line. You don't want to damage that. You don't want to have to replace anything you don't want to. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the caliper off, wiggle it a little bit. It should come straight forwards out. My goodness, is it rusty. So remember, you don't want to pinch the rubber line. So go ahead and try and find somewhere you can get your hook through and then hang it up so it's not going to be damaged. Just like that. If we were only changing the brake pads, we would only need to go this far. But since we're also replacing the rotor, we need to remove this holder. It's got two larger bolts in the back of it. One right here and one right here. They happen to be 17 millimeter. Okay, need two hands. Okay, we need a mallet. There's the upper bolt. There's the lower one. Go ahead and back them all the way out. With the bolts removed, you should be able to remove the holder. I'm also taking the brake pads out at the same time. Go ahead and set that aside. Next there are two Phillips head screws you need to remove. Sometimes they get stuck, so don't be afraid to use any kind of penetrating oil like WD-40 or any kind of lubrication to help you out. You do not want to strip these out. Next thing is to remove the rotor itself. Uh, sometimes these get stuck on, so you may need to beat on it from one side to the other to break it loose. There it goes. Freedom! You see all of that scoring? That's bad news bears right there. Now you're going to want to open up your brand new rotor box. Uh, it's going to be wrapped in plastic and covered in oil. You need to remove said oil because otherwise your brakes don't work. So, hopefully, 
you will have purchased some of that super fine AutoZone brake cleaner. This film is not sponsored by AutoZone. And give her a little shaky root and go ahead and lightly coat everything. Use a fairly clean rag as long as you can find one. And wipe it all down. You want to get that old stuff off. When you're picking it up, try and use the towel itself. That way you're not using your dirty hands to touch your nice clean rotors. Spray the other side down. And again, wipe it off. Okay, this one should be ready to go back on. Because these have screws that hold on the rotors, you can't really screw up putting it back on unless you screw it up putting it back on. So go ahead and line up your studs. Slide it right on. Maybe give it a little beauty wipe down since you're in here. Next up, put your screws back on. Make sure to go back and forth between them because you want to make sure it evenly seats itself. This is going to be similar when we get back to the lug nuts. Not too tight. We want to be able to take them off in another 100,000 miles when we do this. Next we're going to grab this again and we are going to remove the two brake pads that are in here. They should just press outwards. One like so and the other similar. There's going to be some retainer clips being in there. You want them to stay in once we get those new brake pads in there. So for these new brake pads, we're going to slide them right back in in the same spot. Now, we'll see how this actually goes because odds are it's not going to want to fit on there super easily. But we'll try. We'll see. Plus now we've got a much wider rotor because it hasn't worn itself down and much thicker pads for the same reason, because it hasn't worn itself down. So we're just sliding these suckers back in. I actually don't hate doing a brake job on a Kia. It's a much easier car to work with than a lot of other manufacturers. Okay, so we sort of got them set up. Next, we're going to slide her back over in the same spot it was before. We need to put those 17 millimeter bolts back in that we took out. Go ahead and snug them on back up. Next thing, we're going to have to pop the hood. Next thing is to find your brake fluid reservoir. It's going to be that little white bottle with the black cap on it. Go ahead and remove it. And set the cap somewhere you won't lose it. So the reason we take this off is because we're about to compress the caliper. That is... This piece right here. You see how it's extended out? Well, that's because as you apply the brakes, this gets pushed inwards, which clamps down on these pads. So, as the pads wear down, this comes out further and further and further. And especially when you take it off, the pressure pushes this outwards. So we're going to need to compress this with a mechanical clamp. When we do so, it's going to push brake fluid back up the line and back up through that reservoir. And you don't want to have that capped off because we don't want to pressurize the bottle. This is a handy little tool that my dad made years ago. What you do is you stick an old brake pad in there where it would normally clamp up against it and then slide in this. And then when you tighten down on it, all right, this is a bought tool apparently. So as you tighten down on it, it's going to compress that cylinder, pushing the brake fluid up like we talked about. And then once we get it bottomed out, we can then slide it back onto the bracket. You're going to want to go until it bottoms out. Now once we release this clamp, it's going to want to push that piston back out. So you're going to want to be quick and slide it over your new brake pads basically as fast as possible.
All I need to do is get you two 14 millimeter bolts lined back up. Then go ahead and snug them up as well. Not super tight, just tight enough. That's basically it as far as brakes go on the front of the car. Next we're going to throw the tire and rim back on and tighten up the lug nuts. Uh, because this is a front wheel drive car, we can only spin this so much, but the rotor should be able to spin and not already be clamped down on the brake pads. So, good job. No sense in really stunning it up until it's completely on the ground. Now we can go ahead and lower the car back down. Now go and really tighten them up. When tightening, you'll want to move in a star pattern, so like a diagonal from each other. Just remember that. You want to evenly distribute the load. One brake job done. Because this car has disc brakes all the way around, the fronts are basically the same as the backs. So unless I run into anything tricky, I'm not going to show you those. Here I am just finishing up the backs, and I wanted to make it noted that this little rubber piece that you'll run into, that is to block off the hole to get to the adjustment for the inside brake shoes, which are expanding inside this rotor. Uh, you can use a flathead to pull that out, but you don't even have to. So don't bother with that thing at all. Uh, but the backs were froze up pretty good, so we had to beat on them with a mini sledge. Uh, there it is. So they finally pop free and then they pulled right off just like the fronts. Otherwise it's basically doing the same thing. That about wraps everything up. All you're going to want to do is make sure that your brake fluid is topped off. Have somebody go ahead in and pump up the brakes a little bit. Make sure your reservoir stays topped off. Put the cap on it and now you need to go for a test drive. Not sure if this is correct procedure but this is what I've always been told to do to back up say five miles an hour and then stop on the brakes in reverse and then go forward five miles an hour, put the brakes on. Then 10 miles an hour backwards in reverse, put the brakes on. You wanna try and seat these pads into their new slots. Well, that's what I've always been told to do. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do next and I think that's gonna wrap up this episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Thank you so much for watching this episode on how to change your Kia Soul's brake pads and rotors. I hope it was informative to you. And maybe hit the like and subscribe if you feel like it, it's up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.